In this lecture, I want to do a follow-up video on uh, just a real simple probability question just using the coin flips and the die rolls. Okay, so before we start, let's just recall the definition of probability, um, just the classical method. So it was the probability for any event E. So this is our event. It's just equal to the number of ways this event E can occur and it's just divided by the total number of outcomes. Okay. So let's, let's build on this with um, an example that might be a little bit more difficult than some of the ones we had previously seen in my videos. Okay, so here's the problem. Suppose you flip a coin and then roll a die. So you're gonna record your result. So what does a result look like? So you could flip, let's say tails and then roll a five. So we're gonna write that as T5. Right, or similarly, you could, let's say, flip heads and roll a one. Okay, we would show that, I'm gonna show that as H1. Okay, so those, those are what our results are gonna look like. All right, so first, is this a probability experiment? So again, does it meet the two requirements? Is it uncertain results? Yes, for sure it does. Yes. And definitely, um, is it repeatable? Yeah, sure. I can, you know, flip a coin and roll a die again. Yeah, this is totally repeatable. So yes, this is a probability experiment. Okay. So what is the sample space? All right, so the sample space is the list of all possible outcomes. All right, so let's just start with this first one here, okay? You could flip head then a one. Well, what else could you do? You could get head then a two. Well, you could get a head then a three, a head then roll a four, head then roll a five, head then roll a six. Well, it's, you could get the same thing just with tails. You could flip tails then roll a one, tails then roll a two. Tails, then roll a three. Tails, then roll a four. Tails, then roll a five. And then tails, then roll a six. So it looks like there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So just like the number of elements in this set here is twelve. Okay? So that's the size of the sample space. All right, or it's the total number of outcomes. Okay, so what is the probability now? Now, this is important here. This is weird. Of flipping heads or rolling a six. So I'm going to write this as you get heads or you get a six. Okay, so just using that classical definition. It's the number of ways to flip heads or roll six. So think about logically what the or statement implies, divided by the total number of outcomes. Well, the good news is we know the total number of outcomes. It's 12, that's the denominator. So you have to look here, is H1 a head or a six? Yes, yes, it is. So it's one, two, three, four, five. All of these, these six outcomes here is a head or a six. But then look here, T6. Is T6 a head or does it contain the number six? Yeah, it does. So this probability here ends up being one, two, three, four, five, six, seven out of 12. So we got that. All right, now what is the probability? Now it's a little different. Probability of uh, getting heads and a six. So notice the subtle difference here. All right, so just using this classical definition, it's number of ways to flip heads 
and rule six, six. So the and statement means you need to have both and then divided by the total number of outcomes. Well, again, the total number of outcomes is 12. Well, what are the ways you can get both a head and a six? Well, the only way to get a head and a six is this one right here, H6. That's the only thing that is both a head and a six. So this is just one out of 12. So notice the subtle difference between the and and the or for this type of uh, statement here. All right, class, I hope this helps. We'll pick up uh, in continuing lectures with uh, harder and harder types of problems and more interesting problems too.